Hey everybody, it's Paul from Last Level Tech. What you've got in front of you at the moment is the old iPad 3, the new iPad they called it at the time, but it's uh, two generations behind at the moment. But it's running iOS 7.04 and it's jailbroken, as you can see. The XBMC icon is on, is on the screen here. Um, what I'm going to show you is something we've had a bit of a development over the last um, couple of hours slash days in the jailbreaking scene. Um, it's for particularly around gameplay and controlling games in those in, for gameplay. Uh, so previously, if you wanted to use an external controller, you jailbroke your device. You use programs like Blue Troll, um, and you take you you load up your game. You take a screenshot of your game. You'd load the screenshot into Blue Troll, and then you would just manually kind of move the buttons for the controller around on the screen to where the corresponding kind of button would be on the screen for when you're actually supposedly touching it uh, to play the game. Um, yeah, it was a bit fiddly. It worked, I guess, um, but it was a bit fiddly. But of course, with iOS 7, Apple have introduced the MFI scheme of uh, or made for iOS um, for game controller support. Now, there are currently two types of game controller out there at the moment. I can't even remember the names, but they're ridiculously expensive. The reviews aren't that good about them. The sound of precision of the D-pads and everything else are particularly nasty. Um, and I think the price is about $100 for each one of them, which is just ridiculous. Um, but recently, in the Cydia store, an application has come on called Controllers for All. Um, and what this does is it, it, it's a, it manually kind of maps Bluetooth controllers, any kind of Bluetooth device, and integrates in with games that support the MFI setup, the, the made for iOS setup from Apple. So games that are coming out now, newer, particularly newer games, uh, support this control scheme for known controllers, any kind of controllers, to, to control the games on iOS devices. So what I'm going to try and show you here is this Controllers for All application. It's currently $1.99 on the Cydia store. I, I highly recommend it uh, how, and show you how easy it is to actually play the games with this kind of setup. Um, what I've got here is a, a Sony uh, PlayStation DualShock 3, uh, which is a decent enough controller. I'm not particularly a great fan of the analog sticks, but the rest of the controller is fine. And um, what you do is you plug it into your PC. You run a program called Six Access Pair Tool. Put in the Bluetooth address of your iOS device uh, onto the actual controller, and that's essentially it. Once you've installed the application onto your jailbroken iOS device, it's as simple as what I'm going to show you here. Uh, now, so the couple of games that I've got on here, uh, but I'm going to show you Sonic the Hedgehog 2 and Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Um, I have got Grand Theft Auto 3 over there in the corner as well, and I can barely play it because the problem I have is when I get into a vehicle of any kind, I've got no control, proper control over the vehicles, and I find it really, really irritating. So, um, with something like this, this is really good if I can get control the game with a proper joypad. Um, so, we'll, we'll start with uh, Sonic the Hedgehog 2. As you can see, the controller, there's not, no lights on it at the moment, nothing is connected up. And I'm simply just going to start the actual game. You'll see on the screen, on the top, it says initializing Bluetooth, prepare your PS3 controller, searching for PS3 controller, press the PS plus bu the PS button. So obviously the PS button is this one in the center here. Uh, I'm going to press it. You'll see the lights come on. And on the screen, connected to PS3 controller. And that's it. As simple as that. And now I have, I have control over Sonic the Hedgehog. I can start the game if I want. Let's have a look. So you can see I've already got a game loaded up at the moment. So I'm moving the controller up and down. I'll just do a restart with no save. That's fine. Sonic is fine. You see I'm selecting with the D-pad. The, the game starts up. If I press start it goes back to the actual main menu screen. Again I can still move around. Select continue. Carry on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Of course, uh, Sonic isn't exactly the most button intensive game. Left and right and jump, but it works so much better with proper controls than having to use a silly game uh, on screen display, which is really irritating. So, um, I don't know if you know about this particular version of the game, but it's one of the better versions of the game. Particularly because they've uh, reintroduced the Hidden Palace Zone, which was never on any other version of uh, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, and it was scrapped during the development process of the game. So if you're a Sonic the Hedgehog aficionado, it's maybe worth uh, checking it out on your iPhone or your iPad or iPod Touch, um, just so you can play the definitive version, so to speak, of, uh, of this game. Um, but yeah, as you can see, full control with the D-pad. With the I can hold down and I can press the button for the spin dash. 
and away Sonic goes. Which makes it infinitely more playable and enjoyable. If I press the home button, it says on the screen, disconnect controller. If you'd like to reconnect later, you'll need to press the home button and then return to the game again. So I can disconnect it if I want. Or simply, if I exit the game, I'll actually get a message saying PS controller disconnected and the lights are now off on the controller. So that's it. PS controller, PS controller is disconnected on the top of the screen. So, very simple. So I'm now going to go, just going to switch across to Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. And of course, that game starts off straight away with a scene of um, the same thing. Initializing Bluetooth connection. Press the button if I want to sync up. So press the button again. You'll see the lights start to flash. There we go. Connected to PS3 controller. And if I want to just skip through this. Uh, of course, San Andreas, the first thing it starts with is you getting on a bike, so aka a vehicle. And uh, yeah, which is, what, like, like I said, one of my main bugbears of the original um, Grand Theft Auto 3 release on iOS. I really hope they go back and redo uh, the control scheme to support iOS 7 in Grand Theft Auto 3 and Vice City, uh, the ports that they released. They're, they're good ports of, uh, of the game, um, so it's a shame not to have the controller support. Um, so if I just let this start, yeah, 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 so there you go, I'm on the bike, and I can press the controller, and I'm now on the analog stick as well, as you can see, uh, controlling CJ on his bike and getting run over by cars, and I can get off the bike, and run around, and jump, there you go, hijack some other person's car, And there we go, so I'm driving the car, no problem, and obviously much much better than having to use any kind of on-screen display um, to try and play this game, so, and again the similar, I just hit the button to exit, disconnects, I lose the light, and that's it, disconnected, if I want to come back and play the game again, I come back, turn the game back on again, hit the button and I'm instantly playing, so, I hope that gives you a good demonstration of controllers for all for the jailbroken iOS device. Um, and if you uh, if you are serious about playing any kind of games uh, like that on your iOS iOS device, I do sincerely recommend it. And uh, yeah, that's it. So if you uh, like this video, please rate and subscribe, and uh, I'll catch you again later.